Hey everyone, it's Richard Metal Fan here, bringing you guys a brand new 2019 album review. And today we're going to be looking into the new album from the band Dream Theater entitled Distance Over Time, which was released under Sony Music Records. Now, Dream Theater definitely doesn't really need an introduction. They're a progressive metal rock band hailing all the way from New York. They've, these guys have been around since 1985. And uh, Dream Theater, for me, are one of the few progressive rock metal bands I like. I mean, I'm not really a huge fan of it. I mean, I like them. I like between the, some old Between the Varied and Me, Rush, Opeth. Th that's pretty much the stuff I would listen to when it comes to progressive music. And Dream Theater, most of their stuff is pretty good, and there's a few albums are kind of, eh, I don't really care for. Uh, and of course, in my opinion, I I think their best album is, of course, Images and Words, but that's besides the point. We're going to be looking into the band's overall 14th album, and this is the follow-up to their previous album, which came out in 2016, which is The Astonishing, which was a double album, and if you see my review of that, I didn't really care for it. But it wasn't until uh, hearing one of their songs, I believe it was the, the, song, the first song, which was Untethered Angel, I believe, I was like, huh, this actually sounds pretty much better. I actually liked it a lot better, and then I was... Does this album make up for The Astonishing, in my opinion? In my honest opinion, I think it definitely has. I was kind of surprised it's a huge step up from The from the Astonishing. Um, like, everybody the is just, just the, the musicianship's better and more tighter around this, this album. Uh, the production is pretty good. Like, Dream Theater's albums have always have great production. Um, the vocals, let's talk about the vocal work from uh, James Libri. I mean, I mean, during his peak when he first joined the band, right before they recorded Images and Words, they were like, he like he was really good. And there was, I, I don't know, some people have like talks opinions, like he sounds good on studio, but nowadays, but live, not so much. But he's a really okay, good singer. I actually like like him. Um, guitar wise, what can I say about John Petrucci? His he's just a master guitar, it just shreds all over the place. It's just mind boggling. The bass playing is pretty audible. You can definitely hear John Myung's bass. Um, the keys from Jordan Rudis, one of, in my opinion, I think he's a very underrated keyboard player. He, he definitely has shines on some of the tracks. And drumming wise, he's Mike Mangini, is just a great drummer. And this is only his fourth album after replacing original drummer Mike Portnoy, my favorite drummer ever. But he does a good job. I mean, he's been doing playing with them since 2011, so dramatic turn of events. So yeah, without further ado, let's dive into this album track by track. Now the first track is, of course, Untethered Angel, which speaks philosophy to many souls among us who lack sort of like the courage and conviction to chase after unrealized dreams. And structurally, the song is a bit more of something off of like train of thought or systematic chaos, but wastes little time after a, or a chorus to clean clean intro from John before getting right down to business of some very crushing rips, which thankfully have well-mixed drums. And then the verse and chorus structure are standard issue, issue sort of like dream theater. And thankfully sort of like the instrumental meltdown in the middle takes a moment to take us back to something and like the older stuff. And there's like the sludgy instrumental outro of the song after the final chorus. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the final rip, riffs of finally free off of uh, scenes from a memory. Uh, all right, next song is called Paralyzed, which comes in with a simple bare bone single note distortion riff, but as the drums, keys, and bass eventually vocals are layered, and the song begins the, and coalesce and starts to take shape with some lovely chord work from John and add a little bit of parts where James's vocals are adequately isolated to a clean, simple cut through the mix. It's becoming too often, including the sound, to hear sort of like a digital chorus of what sounds like the layers of James. While he may not have the power and range like he did like in 1992, he still has it like adequately that he does not need to be hidden behind sort of like those production tricks. And Petrucci is pretty much allowed to shine with the lovely solo in the song, which though is short and it's tailored exactly right for the song. Um, Into the Light is a very interesting song and it spends the first three or four minutes just feeling like much more or er, contemporary dream theater rocker, but then the song gets very quiet. It's sort of like a nylon string ring guitar or ushers the listener into to a, a sort of like a moment, sort of like the last minute of like like the prophecy of Iron Maiden with that acoustic in, out, 
outro part of that song. But then sort of like the neck pickup from John, John's guitar sort of comes to life with some beautiful melodic leads and then layer, layers the leads that come to something similar to like Orion by Metallica before Mike's infamous snare conduct access to like Jordan's like amusement park of like crazy keyboard so it's sort of like mainly sort of like the old school school sounds and then James comes in one last time before Petrucci goes into like a like just some really just insane shredding but some alternate note open note lead picking straight which is just great um Barstool Warrior which is kind of a weird song title but it has some really good lyrics and composition uh, it has sort of like just some really just some real, one of the best lead works on this album um, and then he just shreds all around it and then around the four and a half minute mark it's just well, just wow um fifth track on here is the song room 137 then which just has some really good grooves and some rips in there. And it kind of reminds me of something off of like Awake. It includes sort of like trippy, psychedelic affected vocal goals. And the song features some creative excursions from JP into sort of like a blues lead guitar, which I like, like something from like Steve Morse. I saw in there. And the following track on here is S2, S2N, which is, per, 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 which is kind of like what I would call call signal to noise which are treated to sort of like some ferocious instrumental interplay play between Petrucci, G, Jordan Rudas, John Myung and Magini. He only they can imagine sort of like a spotlight pivoting from one of the next they kick it up to a notch and shine for a little bit bit and it's just a really great great instrumental song on here love it but it's just some really great instrumentally it sounds great um next song on here is called All Wits End which is runs sort of like the full spectrum of what dream theater is from the breathy piano chord ballad to blistering technical attack right out of like something from scenes from a memory over the course of this 10 minute semi my epic the pick is just i don't know just some insane work on here uh next song is called out of reach which is eh, it's an okay song not one of the in my opinion i just don't really care for it but then the album ends with a bang with the song pale blue dot what? but it's just bombastic nine minute closer is there just a moment of like philosophy philosophical re reflection of man's role in this place of the third rock of the song and the song song begins with what would seem like radio chatter and oxygen presumably from like a spacecraft looking down upon her earth and and the hand, hopefully without any need of just in for more of the Dream Theater members, the song immediately launches into all cannon broadside opening with a self for the everybody but James flying out. The speakers are like a stabbed rat. Mike's playing on this as high on fire. Here and the other three are, three evidently are trying to put him out just as playing just as hard. Hard and then when the vocals come in for the verses, the song really does not take a chill very much and it just seems to be chomping at the bit bit while well, the breeze sort of like leaves the stage to everyone can get out to show them what they can do and yes just an, an instrumental insanity that felt it was something kind of like octavarium and stuff but yeah now overall well distance over time is a pretty good album i actually they think that they redeemed themselves from the astonishing so if i were to give this album a score i definitely would give this probably an 8.5 out of 10 that's just what i would give the review you know so that's my review of the new Dream Theater, guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. And I'll see you all in the next review. And keep it metal.